Hi guys, this is this month's currently reading shelf. I've not quite finished off, I think it was September's reading shelf. Possibly I've still got like two or three books left still to read on that. But I thought, well, I'll move all my books along while I have the free time and film this. And then I can decide whether it'll be getting uploaded in October. Because we're currently on the 8th. 18th of October I think or if it'll be a November currently reading list so I haven't decided yet what's going to be. I still have the other two volumes of Night World to read. I read the first volume. It was just okay. I'm a bit undecided whether I want to continue on and read the rest of them since I'm not as I said, it was just okay. I don't really know if I will read these or not, so I'm not 100% sold yet. I've not 100% decided. It may be a case that I won't read them since I know they'll be going down to the charity shop anyway with the other one. I think it was September I last uploaded. September was quite a good month. Whatever last month it was, I had quite a good month. There was quite a few good reads in there. There was some that was I couldn't get into, put to one side. The Lauren Kate teardrop book. I just couldn't get into that whatsoever and for some reason I couldn't get into the, the kind of sequels to Anna Green Gables. I think it was Emily of New Moon. I don't think they're direct sequels but they're set kind of around the same era. They're also pretty formulaic as well I'm guessing. So I tried. I've put them aside for just now. I'll probably go back to them. I think two of them are still sitting down the stairs somewhere but I will go back to those at some point and see if I can get into them. But there's quite Quite a few books that I've skipped on this shelf, so we'll see how those get on. There's one book that I definitely don't remember buying, which should be interesting. And there's a couple of others that I'm looking forward to. There was some on this shelf that I've had to put kind of delay until the next shelf, so to speak, because I know I'm definitely getting one of them for my Christmas, and I've put them all together as a group to kind of read them. But let's get into the video, see what we've got to read, and see what I'm looking forward to this month. So first of all, I have a very appropriate book for me called So Many Books, So Little Time, A Year of Passionate Reading. And that is me surrounded by books, basically. Which is, I wouldn't have a lamp sitting on top of a book, though. You have bedside tables for that. I, I know I, I, I buy these books and then for some reason I skip them. I don't know what it is. Fifty-two weeks, fifty-two books. I've read a hundred and seventy plus since the beginning of the year, so the thing I don't I'm not keen on these books sometimes because half the time I won't have heard of the authors like what is this? I won't even want to pronounce that. I may try and read this and see if I can get into it and if I can't get into it this time then it's then it's definitely gonna have to go out. And then next up we have a very very skinny book called Follow Titanic and as you can see it's quite thin and there's also nothing on the spine which really gets on my nerves. I mean that gets on my nerves with steel books. Even more so for books. Not sure how this will be. There is the author's name. It's a Marsha and Danny Jones thriller so it's obviously one of these books that are intended for kids. Possibly, I'm getting the impression yeah, printed in Great Britain by Amazon. It's one of these self-published books. So there's others in the series there. I mean, sometimes these books are okay. And this one has pictures dotted throughout it. It's quite... The text isn't too bad. I'm, I remember there was one few months back that I was reading and it was just giant text. It looks quite good. It's... It won't take long to read. There's about 109, 110 pages taken into account. Pictures at the end of the book there about the author. And you've also got previews and information about other books there. And a blank page. Why do they do that? Why, why do they not just make it blank? Why do they print on the other side of it as well? Next up we have the first The Mummy book and this is The Mummy with Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weisz, John Hanna. It's not the Tom Cruise book or the novelization of that dreadful film. It is this one by Max Allen Collins. Now I'm pretty sure I've read this one before. You'll see why if it is a re if it is a reread why I 
I'm rereading it. I do like Max Allen Cullen novelizations. I do find them quite good. He's quite a informative writer. He, I don't know, he's just very good and I do like him. I haven't read much of him recently as far as I can remember. I don't remember seeing many of his books but I have that one. And then after that I have The Mummy Returns which is obviously the sequel and it's still written by Max Allen Collins so that's fine. We like that. Now don't think I've read these that are coming up which or I've had a couple of them but I haven't had another couple of them so I've ordered them so I can read them all as a group $3.98 don't think I got it for anywhere near that price oh, but yes I mean these books always have nice sized text easy to read if you know the film well. And then after that we have the Tomb of the Dragon Emperor again Max Allen Collins. I wasn't keen on this one particularly because Rachel Weisz was replaced. There's, there, I think there's definitely an in-joke in there when she says oh I've changed or something like that and it's like meh. I don't know if I feel like maybe they should have written her out rather than replace her. She just doesn't have the same likability as Rachel Weisz does and they brought back John Hanna, they brought back Brendan Fraser, Jet Li is there as well. The question is right do you read them as a trilogy or should this one come after the second one? That's what I'm trying to figure out at the moment. I don't really think it makes mu that much difference since this isn't my favourite film. I didn't like The Rock's appearance in the, sec the second Mummy film. I think he's come on in leaps and bounds but he was given enough chance to actually work on his acting skills as they were back then. I'm trying to figure out if there's a specific order that I should be reading these in. If you know, please let me know if there's, or should I just read it, Mummy Films and then Scorpion King. The next up we have is The Girl in the Mirror by Sarah Gristwood and it has an Alison Weir quote on the front cover. Potentially why I bought it if it has an Alison Weir quote on the front cover. You know I do like Alison Weir. This is the one that I don't remember purchasing and I'm ripped. More Henry VIII. I didn't really... I, things may have changed since I have been reading like more kind of Tudory books. I don't know if things have changed for me like with Mary Queen of Scots, with Elizabeth I. I don't remember particularly liking the Elizabeth films either. I did get this cheaper but that is annoying me because I could I'll I'll probably be sitting reading it and just kind of tugging it even further but I got that one I'm not sure how I feel about that one and I don't remember buying it either I will probably need to check my Amazon account to see if that's where I bought it from but that is the cover there that's the author's name Grist Wood. and then next up we have If Chins Could Kill by Bruce Campbell I got this out of the green, green, bleh, green room at work and it's called Confessions of a B-Movie Actor and he's very drawn in a comic style there for the front cover with the chainsaw. If you only read one book this year then you are an illiterate fool but this should be the book that you read. Some guy on the internet. Very clever.
when I initially picked this up out of the green room, the blurb really did strike at me and I, I think I was sitting there laughing while reading the blurb and I'm sure it was one of my colleagues actually said, oh, you took that book and I was like, yes, I took your book. I still have your book and this is me finally getting round to reading it. I don't think you'll ever watch this. I have another Titanic, extremely skinny book. Wait till you see the size of this. That is even thinner than the previous one, I think. This is Titanic 2012, Chance for Redemption by Wolf Christopher. Again, this looks self-published. The text is quite, it's not large, but it's not small, but that's quite strange. It's almost like it's been done as a chapter by chapter release on some forum or something like that. Because at the end of every chapter is to be concluded or to be continued. So that's quite interesting. I mean, it won't take me long to read. 44 pages and then at the end you've got fade to black quite intriguing to see something like that. It's maybe like something's been, I don't know, I don't even know how you would write 44 pages and call it a book to be honest with you. Next up, I think these are going to be my at home books as you can see. This is the Outlandish Companion, the first volume. So I have this, yes it is quite chunky and it weighs a ton as well. I still have a sore arm after getting my flu jab done. I'm struggling to hold heavy things at the moment or lift my arm above my head. So you've got nearly 600 pages here and this is basically just covering the first four books in the series. I tried to think what it had been like, the size it would have been if she hadn't released a second volume. So here we have the Outlandish Companion Volume 2 and this covers the next four books in the series. Quite lengthy, you've got over 600 pages in that one, 639. So I have those two, but I also have the original. So this is, I think, basically, uh, this was originally called Through the Stones and she's reissued it as the Outlandish Companion. This was originally published in 1999. So you've got basically, I think this is basically going to be a rehash. As you can see, the blurb is quite similar, but I don't know what to do with this because I remember spending quite a fair bit of money to get that. And I don't want to admit how much it cost me because it was probably in the region of about 20 to 30 pounds. And as you can see, it's used copy as well. So it is quite, quite old and fairly heavy. So I'm going to put it down. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to keep through the stones just because I spent a lot of money on it at the time. Is it going to be a case of that I replace it with those two and then just get rid of that one? I don't really want to get rid of that one but to be honest I don't really have the space on my Diana Gabaldon shelf specifically to actually fit it on. Or I do but I would have to remove some kind of other books that are taking up the end quarter of that shelf and I don't know where to put them. I have The Liar by Nora Roberts which I got I think in Ireland when I was last over there. Uh, I went to Belfast and I got this. It's a large format paperback as well as you can see. I'm pretty sure I got this on the same day that I actually went to a CD signing of Shane Ward shortly before he joins Coronation Street so that gives you some kind of date 
to how far back we're going here. Um, I think I've skipped over it before. I'm definitely going to read it this time. Reading the Nora Roberts Companion that I think featured in the last month's one. Um, it's actually put me in the mood to read them now, but it's also put me in the mood to reorganise them and figure out what Nora Roberts books I do and don't have. And quite frankly, I don't have the space to try and do that at the moment. So maybe we'll just leave that. And next up we have Harlan Coben, The Stranger. I do like a little bit of Harlan Coben. I have met him. He had to kind of crouch down so he could appear in the photo with me. I do, I do quite like Harlan Coben. The only books of his that I haven't really liked were the Myron Bolitar books. I don't know if you've ever read any of those, but I could never, I don't know, I could just never get a handle on them. I never really got them as such. So those are the only ones of his that I don't tend to pick up, but normally I'll pick up the, the other books of his. And I haven't, I know he's done a TV series as well, or he's had a hand in producing a TV series off the back of one of his books, but Correct me if I'm wrong, is it not in French or something along those lines? So another Titanic book, slightly thicker than the previous one. This is called Titanic Relative Fate by V.C. King. I know this one was on my wish list for quite some time before I eventually got it for a reasonable price. is about a sister ship, the Titanic. It's not actually the Titanic itself. The text in here is quite good, looks good. Again, self-published, which is maybe why I struggled for a while to get it for a reasonable price. Next up, we have Crash, which is Visions Book One by Lisa McMahon. And I read the Wake trilogy, absolutely adored that trilogy. Like I zipped through it in no time and I passed it on to my dad and she is just a brilliant author. So I hope this lives up to Wake for me. And it looks like it's another trilogy as well, so if it's good, I'll probably have to get the rest of the books. It sounds similar-ish to the Wake trilogy, except that was Dreams, and this is Visions. But it, I do like the cover as well. It's got a really eye-catch, eye-catching, <laughs> no pun intended. It's, it's got a really eye-catching cover. I do like that, and you've got a similar same on the spine there as well. And then next up, we have Touching the Surface. Another book that I've probably bought based on the cover art there, because I really like that. This is by Kimberly Sabatini, I want to say. It sounds kind of intriguing. I think I saw the blurb and saw the cover and thought they tied quite nicely together without revealing too much about what the book is about or revealing too much in the blurb itself. It does sound quite interesting. Hopefully that'll be good. I think I've had this for a while. I've skipped over it. And then we have Origin by Jessica Curry. I want to say I may be saying that wrong. The jungle hides a girl who cannot die and I love that cover again. It's so simplistic and I love the kind of addition of the purple flower there. Just kind of draw your eye if you didn't initially see the shape of the woman. Again, it sounds like a really interesting story. I like the cover. I hope it's not I hope it's not all about the cover, you know. Someone left a nice little bookmark inside.
Oh, I like that cover too. Next up, another book from... I didn't get this when I was in... The last time I was over in Ireland in Belfast. Uh, I had to order it on Amazon. But we went actually on a kind of day trip. We saw the Giant's Causeway. I don't remember what it's called now, but we saw the bit. It's been fe featured in Game of Thrones quite a bit, and it's the trees that are overhanging. But this is Dunluce Castle, History and Archaeology. I've taken quite a few pictures around here. Like, we weren't actually allowed to go into the castle. It was cordoned off. So it was quite a shame that it was actually cordoned off. We couldn't actually go down into the castle. And we didn't have that much time there anyway they were kind of rushing us about so I think we only maybe had 15-20 minutes there at best to take photos but this is what if I remember correctly this is what C.S. Lewis based his Cape Paraval Narnia on this is what he saw this is what he thought would look nice and this is supposed to be what he kind of based the drawings and the description of Cape Paraval in the Narnia books on this. So I think it'll be quite interesting. I think it'll be an at-home book again. There's quite a few colour photos dotted throughout. Obviously I have my own photos from that time in an album somewhere. But there's quite a lot of information about this and there's probably only going to be a small section that actually relates to anything Narnia. So I've probably wasted a lot of money. And then next up we have an absolute bargain that I got. This is the What You See Is What You Get autobiography by Alan Sugar. And I got this for $1.99 from the works because it's slightly damaged. So all because of a couple of rips there on the front as you can see. I got it reduced and I snatched that up. You can bet I snatched that up as soon as I saw it. I was like, that's mine. I'm having that. And I'm sure I picked it up and there was actually better copies behind it that weren't reduced. So I was like, I'm having the reduced one. I want a hardback book for $1.99. I think the main bit for me from this book will be The Apprentice. That's really how I know Alan Sugar. His photos dotted throughout as well. Look at him there. He hasn't really changed, has he? Watch The Apprentice every year. I really enjoy it. I didn't see it straight from the first season. At the very beginning, I think when Michelle Dubery was on it, that was my first season. I was really rooting for her. I really, I still follow her to this day with whatever she's doing, mainly on Instagram now. But I see her. But yeah, ever since then, I've been just addicted to The Apprentice. Next up, we have another Titanic book. I have quite a few Titanic books coming up. This is The Last Night of a Small Town by John Welshman. Then I have When We Do Meet Again by Holly Van Horn. So this is an author that I found on Amazon. She does a lot of kind of time travel books. So I've been trying to get them. They're not the easiest ones to get. She seems to be mainly published in America. So you're either spending the book price plus again the postage price to get from America. Occasionally they do come down in price on Amazon. I've managed to get a couple this way. I've, I'm hoping she's good now because I've got like maybe two or three. I think this is the first one I've actually got to read. Self-published again, which is probably why I'm having issues getting a hold of it. There's actually another book on my shelf that's also by Holly Van Horn. So straight up after that book, When We Do Meet Again, I have Tangled Novelization. And again, we're going to have the same issue as we've had with previous novelizations. So this one is by Irene Trimble who has written a few of the other novelizations that I have but again she is not anywhere on the front cover or on the spine. 
she's not on the first title page there as you can see and that's just the ISBN and then she's not here either it's only there that you actually have her name I think she's done brave as well but quite reasonable size writing for a kids book nice colour photos inside and then the Nintendo DS advertisement Inten the advertisement for the Wii and Nintendo DS game at the back there and then we have Holly Van Horn again Portrait of Lydia so this is another self-published style book but this is Time Traveler series book 6 so I'm not sure like if these need to be read in order if they're just kind of standalone books like most of the Bess McBride books are And next up we have Flower Reader by Elizabeth Lupas and another kind of Mary Queen of Scots book kind of after the Tudor times. Not sure about this one. Then we have the novelisation of Edge of Tomorrow as you can see. Clearance, one pound. And there is the author's name previously published as All You Need Is Kill. And it was kind of re-released to tie in with the movie, no doubt. Previously, only £2. Clearance, £1. I'm sure my dad picked this up for me out of 7 99 original price. Out of one of the pound shops, or maybe kind of one of the... You know, they're cheap, but they're not sometimes quite a pound. I'm sure how good this will be. I wasn't that keen on the film. Probably wouldn't have been one that I would have picked up myself. It's here, it's... It's not too long, but it's just depending because it sounds like it's based on the book. The film was based on the book, so sometimes that can be a little bit iffy. Then we have The Ghost of Lily Painter by Caitlin Davies. I don't remember why I bought this. I don't remember having this. See, when you read the back of it, it sounds quite intriguing, but for some reason I don't remember why I picked, picked it up when I look at the cover initially. Next up we have Roanoke by Angela Hunt, a book that I was very intrigued by the cover. Also, there is a American Horror Story series around this. And I find this quite fascinating actually, like how they just disappeared. So it'll be interesting to read this again. It's a self-published book. Quite dense text, I have to say. It's something that kind of intrigues me and that's why I picked it up. Next up we have a book called Breaking the Silence by Jo Milne. You may have seen her on the news, on Facebook and stuff. She was learning to hear for the first time and I got so upset when I first saw that video. So upset. So I think it'll be quite good to read this and obviously to read what she's been through as well. It's such a shame, it's such a heartbreaking story. So I think I got this from Book People originally, something like that. And I find the cover so simplistic as well. It'll be quite an interesting read, it looks like quite a thick one. A thin one even. Looks like quite a thin read and there's photos in the middle. Then we have another Jenny McCarthy biography called Stirring the Pot. I do like her biographies. They tend to be you know, not from birth to death. They seem to be just whatever's on her mind at the time she'll talk about. I've got a couple of them now as well.
again she's quite easy to read she's very quick to read as well last but not least for this shelf is just like the movies by Kelly Fiore, Fiore, something along those lines. I do like that cover. Oh look, Titanic. <laughs> There's the reason why I bought this book now. This sounds quite interesting because it'll be like a lot of movies that I've probably seen. It's quite a, a nice looking book, quite kind of easy to read text. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. I hope it'll be good now. That is this month's currently to read list. So there are quite a few books I'm looking forward to. Finally getting the Mummy trilogy, quadrilogy read. Uh, finally getting the Diana Gabaldon books read. The Ellen Sugar read. Seeing what Touching the Surface and Origin are like because I'm sure I've skipped over those before. Again, I will leave a list of all the books down below and I will star them as I come to them. If there's any books you think I would like or would like to recommend you can check out my goodreads and see if I've already read it maybe and you can see any reviews on my Amazon account and on my goodreads uh, specifically for the books I'm trying to review them particularly novelizations I don't think they get a lot of reviews sometimes so if I see a book that I'm currently reading it doesn't have many reviews or I disagree with a review then I'll review it most often than not I don't really review them as it stands at the moment I hope you are hope you've enjoyed this video and I will let you get on with the rest of your day hopefully reading a good book bye